Who wins in a fight, the bigger man with no experience or the smaller man with all the experience? We've touched upon this a lot the last few months and I appreciate you guys sending me new examples to well and truly end this size versus skill debate once and for all. So I can't remember who it was who sent me this, but today we're going to be reacting to UFC fighter Dustin Poirier, lightweight division, former interim champion, in a grappling match against the world's strongest man, Brian Shaw. Now, obviously, size matters to a certain extent, and there's a lot more variables that goes into who's going to win a fight. Is it going to be a street fight? Is the kicks allowed? Is it going to be just a purely grappling match? Is it going to be MMA? Is it going to be boxing? But for the most part, skill beats size when size is unskilled up to a certain point first off we've got dustin the diamond poirier he's 34 years old five foot nine in height and he's 155 pounds that's his fighting weight dustin poirier probably walks around anywhere between 170 and 185 pounds he's well known for his boxing but he's also a really good grappler too then we've got the mountain of the man brian shaw and his body stats are six foot eight in height and weighs 200 kilograms, 441 pounds. So we got 441 pounds for Brian Shaw, but let's be extra generous for Dustin Poirier and say that he weighs 190 pounds. So there's a 251 pound difference between these two athletes. And here we can see the colossal size difference. So I guess this video is going to answer for us who would win in a grappling match out of these two, and then we'll answer who would potentially win in a street fight or an MMA fight. Okay, let's get into the reaction. Let's see how Brian Shaw moves in comparison to Dustin Poirier. Uh, Dustin Poirier, I am walking into your world, brother. Now we're in my gym. Now. Yes, yes. And uh, we're going to get some bag work. We're going to get some grappling, some fundamentals of kickboxing. So we're just gonna start off with a three minute round here. Warm up our shoulders, our biceps. So we're just gonna step and throw a jab. Uh, lead hand, gotcha. Okay. Step and lead hand, jab. So that's a one. Now we're gonna do a one, two. Okay. Jab, cross. And then we're gonna do a one, two, three. Jab, cross, hook. Okay. So Going jab, a bit fast forward. I'm gonna hook with the lead hand, so bang, bang, bang. Okay. So, so left, jab, hand, right. And then, and then pick it the lead. with this one. Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of like a torque thing. You're kind of torquing. So when I throw my jab, my hips are turned this way. Throw my cross, my hips are turned the other way. Throw a hook, my hips come back. Okay. So it's all generating power. Gotcha. And we just go through. Make, that make, he's making it look easy. Is what he's doing. I, I just, I kind of want to um, just tackle this. Thing. That's kind of what I want to do. I kind of want to rip it off of here without hitting it. You know what I'm saying? I, I know what you're saying. <laughs> gotcha. Throw my hook. I usually roll or bring it back. I mean, I, I... You're going too fast for him, Dustin. Slow down a little bit. <laughs> Now, look, I just want to say, the guy is an absolute giant, but you can see how muscles don't help in the way of being able to fight. Now, some people might say it's not to do with muscles, it's to do with the fact that he just doesn't know how to punch. Just having that bulk on your frame will make it a lot harder to pick up the technique of being able to punch. So, yeah, the reason why he can't punch isn't to do with the fact that he's got muscles, it's because he needs to learn the technique, but having that much size on you does not help. Uh, 100%. Yeah, so jab, step in, hand back. Jab, cross. Also, one thing that'll confuse him is Dustin Poirier, southpaw. He's left-handed. So Brian Shaw's going to be looking at Dustin, and that's probably why he's getting confused with the coordination of which hand to hook with. Gotcha. Jab, cross, hook. That's just warm up. Because it's opposite stances. So we're, we're just going to play around for a couple minutes. Yeah, just kind of freestyle, have fun, use those three different punch combinations I showed you, and just okay. warm up the arms. Like it, I like it. <laughs> now we got the, the kick coming in. The heck is coming in. The favorite. Ah. Two of these. Woo! Three calf kicks. Is there, do you think there's a way, like, I mean, is there a way I can hold a pad while you kick it? Oh, yeah. I feel like we should do that. I want to feel the power. I would love to show you that. the kick, you know what I'm saying? That's it? Yeah. But any of me fellow martial artists out there, don't you just hate it? And obviously it's not their fault, but when you're with a newbie and they're meant to be holding the pad side on, say you've got Muay Thai pads or a kick pad, and you're meant to hold it on your leg for the roundhouse, and then they gradually turn it more front-facing. So you move round them so the pad's not front-facing you anymore, and you're actually in line to kick the pad, and then they just bring the pad front-facing again. The martial artist in the comments will know exactly what I mean. It's just annoying. I've just seen Brian do it then. Come, Mike. Oh, damn. Here, right? <laughs> Brian Shaw won't even have to try here. Yeah, 
pulling yourself into the kick like that. Yeah, so like if I'm standing in front of you. Take my upper body. It's like. Now. I'm not hating on Dustin Poirier here. He's an absolute world-class phenomenal fighter. But he's obviously not the best of coaches. Tell Brian to turn his lead leg foot out so he can open up his hips to actually kick. He's not actually explaining it to Brian. Anyway. Oh, boy. <laughs> 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 Feel like that's not well executed is what that is. Imagine people like Brian actually learned to fight. They would just be absolute monsters. Luckily enough, they haven't got a clue. It's, like a, it's a lot of force, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of force. <laughs> like, if I'm, if I'm here, it's like, how far away do I need to be to actually... Yeah. And you, and you see, you just naturally, like, said, yeah. like, there's no way you're... You just know that one perfectly placed inside leg kick or calf kick or even outside leg kick would absolutely destroy Brian. Sure. By uh, just, just rhythm and timing, like, if you're well, stepping forward, forward I, I, I come here, you bang! Yeah. I know, halfway through that step, I'm going to catch you. Sure, sure. Yeah. 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 And that's what Bradley Martin doesn't realise. You can be countered on the way in, especially by these professional athletes who have got insane reflexes and perfect timing. By the time Bradley Martin or Brian Shaw think about stepping in <laughs> Dustin Poirier sparking your lights out and if you don't get knocked out by it you'll certainly think twice about doing it again and you'll go into fear and panic mode because you've never been punched like that in your entire life okay let's go into the grappling section yeah but we're gonna take it to the ground and see what happens okay so but I did just see this guy lift the dumbbell that weighs as much as me so <laughs> <laughs> he might get up let's see here we go like if I just took you down and I passed your guard We'd be here in psychic drills. This is what I can drill. Oh, dude, you feel like you're about to get up when you haven't even started. <laughs> I can't even get my arms. Okay, I'll tap you three times and you start getting up. Okay. I'm going to go a flow pace, but I'm going to try to... Okay. One, okay. two, three. Now, as you can see, this is no Bradley Martin versus Nate Diaz where there's like an 80 pound weight difference or 50 pound weight difference. This is a 200 plus pound weight difference. Now, they are just grappling and I haven't seen this, so I expect Brian Shaw to be able to just kind of push Dustin Poirier off. Although, I do think Dustin should be able to get to a submission just because Brian Shaw doesn't really know what to look out for. That's it, get the back, get the back, there you go, okay. Right, he's got that. <laughs> yeah. So there you go, obviously, like, if that was a street fight, Brian Shaw could have just dumped Dustin on his head. Obviously, we understand that. But just within the realms of grappling, obviously, Dustin took that one. <laughs> you could start a side control, which is so big. I think I can get up. You want to see it? Yeah. Okay. Position for position. Okay. okay, this is going to be interesting. Dustin's going to give Brian Shaw side control. He's going to have 440 pounds lying on top of him. And this is why I talk about making sure that you're strong as well as skilled. Even if you do only weigh 150 pounds or 70 kilos, it's a really good idea for you to be able to bench press 1.5, 1.7, maybe even eventually two times your body weight because strength matters. My personal best on a one rep max bench press is 140 kilograms. Obviously, Brian Shaw is 60 kilograms more than that. But me being being able to bench press that weight is going to give me a little bit of an advantage if I ever found myself in this position with someone who's significantly heavier than me. <laughs> so what would... <laughs> Lord <of> mercy! <laughs> so you have to tell me where to put... Like, okay, so you're going to be sideways, uh, your body, your legs will be this way. Okay. And you're going to go with uh, underhook, his power position. So my right arm's going to go under. Your under, and your other arm probably go around my head. And then I'll just squeeze. Dustin Poirier with the impeccable, simplistic coaching again. Not. So ideally, what would be the best if you were if you were in side control to submit somebody from side control? Probably uh, start setting up an arm. If I was on top of you trying to submit you, yeah. start setting up an arm triangle, maybe knee, knee slide uh, to mount. Okay. I mean, that just all went right over my head, but we'll try. <laughs> An arm triangle, yeah. When he said knee slide to mount, he means getting the knee on belly, sliding the knee over his belly, and then getting into a full mount position. Gotcha. Okay. So, okay. Like right here, this is side control. <laughs> just, yeah. just lie right. on him. Yeah. One, two, three. <sighs> yeah, that's going to be hard, that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
See, what Brian's doing good here, he's not giving Dustin any space whatsoever. He's just bear hugging Dustin, so Dustin has got no space to scramble or create any room to wiggle out. You can also see Dustin's got the butterfly hooks. You can't see me mouse cursor, but he's got his feet on the inside of Brian Shaw's thighs. What you do is you use that to displace their body weight, bring their center of gravity higher, and then hope to sweep them off you. But when you're doing it with 440 pounds, it's a little bit easier said than done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he's a mount, he's a mount. Brian's half guard. Okay, back side control. Dustin's almost, it's just the strength. And the cardio that you need to fight a fella like that off you. Cardio is a weapon in instances like these. <laughs> He's gonna go for a show. I feel like this is a good position. It's a great position. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna protect the neck here. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh yeah. But just the body weight is too much. It's too much. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dustin more so tapped from just getting squashed there. That's called the squish submission. You can see he tapped before he even locked a choke in. Dustin would have been completely fine defending that choke. It's just the body weight, the sheer amount of body weight just lying on top of him would have been too much. Now, I think Dustin could have dragged it out a little bit longer and Brian Shaw probably would have gassed and then Dustin would have been able to get out of there. I would have liked to have seen them go on for a little bit longer there. Brian Shaw wins by collapsed lung. Huh? <laughs> uh, tough one. It's up there both close. <laughs> This is crazy, like you're not. Just your body, I'm, doing, I'm using technique, but. Yeah. Just your body weight smashing is so hard on my diaphragm and my lung six man. Yeah. Energy. Yeah. Hey, it's absolutely horrible as well when your lungs are on fire and then someone just lies on top of you and puts the titty in your mouth. And I'm not talking about a beard, I'm talking about another fella who weighs a lot more than you. And then you just get a mouth full of tit and you're like. <laughs> I'll be completely honest, I've got no shame in admitting that I have tapped from just having titty in my mouth. Big, hairy, man titty. I tried to elevate you a few times, like... No, totally. I've, I've even somebody 200 pounds, somebody's like 400 pounds. Yeah. Like, if I get butterfly hooks, I can start getting their butt up and get space. Literally. Sweeps. Yeah, so when you're doing butterfly hooks, right, the position that Dustin's legs were in then, let me just try and take you back to that position there. See right here? So imagine Brian Shaw is on top of Dustin. You were essentially doing a quad extension. It's a quad isolation exercise. It's just extension of both knees that you're trying to use to flip someone off you. So imagine trying to do a 400-pound quad extension. Unless you're on copious amounts of gear, it's going to be difficult. So that was pretty much it for the grappling side of things. So when they just had a freestyle grapple, obviously Dustin got to his back and choked him out pretty easily. The difficult thing choking out people of this size is the sheer size and diameter of the neck and traps just trying to actually get your arm round and be able to lock a choke in around a 24 26 inch neck is just going to be really difficult so dustin smashed it there but then obviously once brian shaw got the on top position inside control dustin really couldn't do much just from the sheer amount of weight if it would have went a little bit longer dustin could have potentially tired brian out although these strong men they have decent cardio they're not just doing strength training they're doing strength endurance training a lot of the time because look at all the strongman events there's a lot of endurance elements into it so they're not just like big meatheads with zero cardio so brian's done quite well to be fair now that being said what would happen in a street fight well as we were speaking about before as dustin mentioned brian has to close that distance first without actually getting tagged and he's not used to getting hit. So it could be very easy for Dustin to tag him on the way in. He could just keep the distance and hit him with a few solid leg kicks and Brian Shaw would probably give up quite easy because they're not used to that level of pain. If you've ever been hit with a solid leg kick, you know, it's horrible. You'd rather be punched in the face because a punch in the face doesn't really hurt, but you get a good solid kick in the leg. That shit can last for a week, two weeks. So leg kicks, in my opinion, would be a vital tool to use against someone of that mass. Now, obviously the situation, the circumstances depend. If I'm in a bar, on the dance floor and there's loads of people around me. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to get off a leg kick there, am I? It's just going to have to be an all-out hyperdrive, light speed, fast twitch muscle fibre hook to the chin. Another tool you could use against someone of this size is just an oblique kick or a side kick to the knee. Hyper extend the leg back, snap some ACLs and MCLs, and then he wouldn't be able to support that 400 pounds of body weight on that knee. And then fake one more leg kick and then hit him with a one-two. Absolutely ended. With people like that, you have to be either all the way out or all the way in. So you could either have to use 
long weapons like kicks, low kicks, side kicks, or be all the way in and use short weapons like uppercuts and hooks. And when you're fighting people like that in the gym, you can easily just walk in with your hands up because you've got big 16 ounce gloves on you. So you can just take the shots, you can parry, but you can't necessarily do that in a street fight. You can't just hold your hands up like that because there's no padding. You're going to get hit. So if you want to close that distance, you need really good head movements and you've got to do it fast. You have to blitz. And what is it the smaller fighters have that larger fighters don't? Speed and explosiveness. So that is how you would beat a larger fighter that weighs 400 odd pounds. Fantastic video anyway. It's good to see these real life experimentations. I'd love to do something like this myself in the future. What do you guys think? Leave all your comments down below. As always, let's keep the channel going. We're just about to hit 60,000 subscribers. Road to 100k. Let's go. Like the video, boys. Subscribe if you're new to the channel because we upload every single day, pretty much. And on that note, I'll see you tomorrow.